Yes, what were the things that Wali saw on her bus ride? What were the things that she saw? When she went to the town, she was very happy. And uh, she saw these uh, beautiful things around her. She saw the green fields and the sky, mountains, the palm trees. And uh, yes, so when did she laugh the most? When, uh, what moment did she enjoy the most? That was when uh, she saw the cow running in the road in front of the bus and how the driver was there pressing the horn quite hard, but uh, the cow was uh, the user running near up there, right? Then when she reached the town, what was uh, Bali's uh, reaction? Did she get off the bus? No, she did not get off the bus. She stayed sitting in the bus because she did not want to get lost and besides it was not in her plan. And uh, she immediately gave the bus, uh, the conductor, 30 paise more for her return journey. And even though the conductor offered to buy her a cold drink, she did not uh, accept that offer, which shows her that, yes, she is very, what, alert and aware, right? So she did not take anything from him and she just kept on sitting in the bus. Now, while coming back, what did she notice? That the cow was there uh, lying uh, dead on the side of the street. And in this very short time interval, we see this major mishap, this major accident it took place. And when Bali saw that, she was very quiet. And uh, it was that, you know, like uh, just in life, you know, there are good moments, there are happy moments, there are sad moments. So like that also, and even while traveling here, so this journey, it could be maybe, yes, a comparison to life itself. So in life also we come across very tragic moments. So she saw the cow and she was very upset. And why did she undertake this journey? Why did she want to ride the bus? She wanted to see what is it that people go out every day and she wanted to see this view of the world right and she did see the world outside okay and when she came back what had happened she was expecting her mother to be asleep but who was there with her mother yes who was there with her mother an aunt from the neighborhood and she was very talkative and she started asking her that where are you coming from and all and uh, yes so she was a little scared uh, that her mother might get angry but uh, so nothing of that sort happened isn't it right and uh, so she is there when her aunt is there talking or the lady is there discussing about what happens so many things happening in the world without her knowledge so right now also when she was at home and she's going to be home after that and she was there before also but without her knowledge what is happening there's a big, beautiful world outside and so many things happening, right? And uh, she could really relate to that. And she was also talking from her experience, okay? Now, what kind of a girl is Bali? Come on, we had a few blanks yesterday, right? And uh, from those, we can find out, girl, Bali, what is, what is she like? Yes, yeah, so she's a, quite a young girl, only eight years old. But she is quite brave, quite responsible, quite bold, adventurous. Yes. And uh, she is very innocent. How she laughs at all the little moments that she uh, enjoys in her life. When she looks outside the window, she saw, sees all the beauty outside. So she is a very innocent little girl. Right? Yes. Then she is very respectful also. She is uh, there, you know, and doesn't like to be called uh, a child. And uh, the conductor immediately starts addressing her as a matter when he pays the when she pays it the full money, by right? the full fare of the ticket. Clear? Yes, anything else? And uh, she is uh, very good in her planning and how she saved the money, how she controlled her temptations, her desire to go on a ride or a buy candy and everything, but she did not do that. Yes. And now let's uh, do these questions here. Okay, have you done them? Why does the conductor refer to Bali as Madam? 
Why does he refer to her as madam? Can anybody of you give me the answer? Would you like to speak up? Yes. Harshit, Harshita, Shiva, Harshit, Zay, Kartik, Zay, Prof, Zay, right? So many others. And uh, anybody of you would like to give the answer? Why does he refer to Vali as madam? Yes. You can raise your hand. I can unmute you and you can speak. Why does he call her madam? He, to make fun of her? He's, is he making fun of her? Yes, because the way she was behaving as a grown up, right? So he called her madam. And how, you know, like, like an elderly person, a grown up person, she gave the money for her ticket. And uh, so she said, I bought my ticket, I need a seat for myself. So he, she's not a little girl, she's a madam. Okay, right. Now, what are the lines that tell you that Bali was enjoying a ride on the bus? What parts of the... Yes, yes. So she, she showed responsibility. That is why also. And she had got the money to buy a ticket. And she wanted a seat to herself. That is why the conductor called her madam. What are the things that she enjoyed a lot? She was looking out of the window and uh, she could not uh, see properly because uh, there was a screen uh, right on the window and so she stood up and wanted to see outside and uh, she was laughing and clapping her hands, enjoying herself and seeing all the beautiful sights, right? And uh, yes, so, so she was there laughing, you know, with the people, when they made fun of her also, she joined in the laughter. And uh, when uh, somebody told her to sit down and how uh, she says that, who are you calling a child? I'm a child. I'm a big girl because I'm traveling alone. So she really enjoyed her bus ride. Now, why does Vali refuse to look out of the window on her way back? Because what did she see? She saw the dead cow and it really disturbed her. And so she didn't want to look out. <laughs> what does Vali mean when she says, I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge? So what does she mean by that? So she meant that, yes, in this world, so many things are there happening without our knowledge. And uh, the elderly ladies were having a discussion. And uh, even though she was not supposed to interrupt or interfere in their talks, but she still said that, yes, because she had had this experience and the world goes on. There's so many things happening around us that we are not aware of. Right now, we are in professional studies, but outside, life goes on. Right? So, it is, there are so many things happening here, nature and work, we have uh, so many, you know, like, yes, uh, development happening, and projects there, people going to their work, and so many big decisions being made. So, too many things happening which we are not aware of. The author describes the things that Bali sees from a eight-year-old girl's point of view. Can you find evidence from the text of the statement? All of you come and look at uh, some of the things here. Go to the text. Find out what the example is. Yes. How are these things uh, from the point of view of an eight-year-old child? What are the things? Yes. What were they? So, for like, uh, she wanted to look out of the window, but she could not see because uh, that uh, blind was there. She stood up, right? And uh, yes, so the beautiful things that she could see, the shop that was there, the town, and so many shops with so many good things on the screen, right? And looking at people coming and going and uh, wondering uh, all that, right? So, she's there, you know, like, uh, as a little girl she is, they're giving her opinion, giving her judgment. Now the story has a lot of people talking in it. The conductor jokes and laughs with Bali. Some passengers try to show their concern for her and her mother and her aunt spend some time chatting. A lot of talking. A lot of people talking. But read the conversations carefully. Think of similar people or similar situations that you have experienced. You make a person to speak or, or a person who spoke to you saying what they said, not what your replies. Okay? Now, there were a lot of conversations. How you talk to a bus conductor? How you talk to a little girl? How will you talk to, you know, an aunt, a relative coming to your house? 
right? How people talk to others when they are traveling. Some people are rude, some are polite, some are helpful, some are unconcerned, isn't it? Right? So all, all these conversations, you know, and the way you talk with, with others, uh, the way you conduct yourself, it says a lot about your behavior. And in the story, we have seen it, how the conductor realizes that, okay, this little girl, she's there. And uh, she wants to be treated like a girl because, yes, he noticed that there was no one with her and he was being quite careful and taking good care of her. Now, have you ever planned something entirely on your own without taking grown-ups into your confidence? What did we plan and how did we carry out your plan? Of course, we know very well what you planned and how you carried it out and it was successful, okay? Right, so you do plan little things here without maybe a surprise birthday party for your parent, you know, father, right? A surprise party for the anniversary, anything here, right? Uh, yeah. So all these things, the planning that you did and how was it successful? Have you made a journey that was unforgettable in some way? What made it memorable? I think so all the journeys that we take, right? It's uh, not necessarily that a major incident has to happen to make them memorable, but uh, yeah, you, you go to that place, the journey itself here, yeah, it makes it very, very exciting. And all the journeys are there, lots of excitement, lots of things happening. Are you concerned about traffic and uh, road safety? What are your concerns? How do you make road travel safer and more enjoyable? I, I want you to write these paragraphs, right? I, I all these three you'll be doing. Let's see. Now, are you concerned about traffic? Yes, and road safety? We are concerned about traffic and road safety. How about you make uh, the road safer? So we are concerned that people, they don't follow traffic rules. Yes, how people are very careless on the road, right? How they create problems for others. We have youngsters like you people, they're on the roads and many of them don't obey the traffic lines. They don't follow the traffic rules, which creates a problem for others. And sometimes where there's supposed to be two rows of vehicles, we have people making a third row also and creating an unnecessary traffic jam, right? So how would you make road travel safer? You would plan for it properly. You would make sure your vehicle is there right, uh, in good condition. And yes, if you want to enjoy, you will also make sure that others are also comfortable while you travel. You will follow the traffic rules, right? You should stay within the speed limit and in crowded areas, how you're supposed to, you know, right? So all these things we need to take care of. And yes, here, you're planning a, a journey, how you can make it comfortable by planning in advance, making all the preparations, learn about what are the weather conditions over there, what kind of things are required, right? And being planned in advance in case of any kind of problem happens, okay? Right, now please let's come to the poem, Amanda. All of you open your books here. I will not be sharing the screen for that. All of you look at your poem, Amanda. Have you opened the poem, Amanda? Yes, page uh, 61 of uh, your book. And uh, let us discuss the questions there. What is this poem about? Yes, it's about a young girl and how her mother is uh, constantly telling her things to do and not to do. And how she's always uh, there, you know, like trying to escape from that situation by the use of her imagination. She imagines herself to be alone. She imagines herself to be in such a place that where, uh, yes, uh, uh, she would not be disturbed by the elders. Is it clear? Yes, come on, look at the poem, Amanda. How old do you think Amanda is? She's a teenager, right? Because we're talking about her acne, we're talking about her mother telling her not to eat chocolates. All this is there. Who do you think is speaking to her? Who's the speaker in the poem, Amanda? Parent, yes. And uh, right away, she's been constantly nagged and told uh, things uh, to be done and not to be done. 
right? So you can say, yeah, it's a mother telling her. Now, why are the standards two, four, and six given in parentheses? Why are they given like that? Because they are the thoughts of, or they are the response. But how does Amanda respond? The mother is telling her all the time. And how does she respond? She does not answer that. Her actions are there. And how would she look when she is there just thinking about being Rapunzel or being a mermaid or being an orphan, right? So she would be there far and distant and would not be very attentive. Okay, right? It would be quite upsetting. It would be quite disturbing. Now, these parentheses, they are not her words. They are her thoughts. So please write, because they are not her words, it's not her verbal response. It's not that, okay? And the place here, yes, about the poem Amanda, come on, let's see now. What is it? Why is it in brackets? Because it's a response, right, to her. It's not a verbal response. She's not saying anything. She's not replying to what her mother is saying or doing, but she's just sitting there quietly. And as a result, because she's silent, she's not responding. So mother is getting more annoyed. Okay, so she's thinking that she's disobeying her. She's not listening to her. And she's thinking that, yeah, anybody would think that I keep on nagging you, but you are not responding, you're not listening. Who is the speaker in two, four, and six? Do you think the speaker is listening to the speaker in standards one, three, five, and seven? She is listening to her maybe, but she is not actually responding to it. She's not reacting to what her mother has to say. What could Amanda do if she were a mermaid? What could Amanda do if she were a mermaid? Yes, she would just float in the waters and be away, right? So in the mermaid, she's talking about the emerald green waters and she would just drift on the water and be far away with no one. No, she would be the sole inhabitant alone over there with no one to disturb her. Is Amanda an orphan? No, she's not an orphan. But why does she say so? Because it's a thought, it's an idea that comes to her mind that orphans are their children who do not have parents. That means they will not have anybody telling them what to do and what not to do. So she imagines herself to be an orphan, where she can walk around in her bare feet in the dust and where she can get tidy. She does not have to clean the room, she does not have to polish her shoes, right? You know the story of Rapunzel? Why does she want to be Rapunzel? So what's the story of Rapunzel? Yes, so this little girl and living in the tower and uh, yes, uh, taken away by the and how she's, uh, you know, kept away from the rest of the world. She has this long hair and uh, whenever uh, the stepmother or the witch would come back and she would ask Rapunzel to put, put down her hair and then she would just hold her hair and climb up to the tower. Okay, so she wants to be Rapunzel because Rapunzel is in the tower away from the world and no one to disturb her and she can just be alone. So what is it that she wants? What do you think Amanda desires for most? She wants to be alone. She does not want to be disturbed. She does not want someone telling her what to do and what not. Right. Now what does a girl yearn for? Maybe she yearns for understanding. Maybe she yearns for respect. Maybe she yearns for, yes, someone who can understand her condition as a teenager. Right? And what does this point tell you about Amanda? Amanda is very imaginative. Amanda is very, very imaginative. Amanda does not uh, respond to any situation. In fact, she goes off in a dream land. She goes off in her dream world. Right? Clear? Now, read the, the last stanza. Do you think Amanda is sulky and moody? The last stanza, mother tells her, let's stop that sulking at once. Right? Uh, Amanda, you're always so moody, Amanda. Anyone to think that I nagged at you, Amanda. So she's saying that. Uh, Yes, uh, 
uh, that you are so moody and not listening at all, and uh, you would uh, someone would think that I keep on talking you the whole day. But do you think Amanda is sulking? Amanda is definitely not sulking, but Amanda definitely seems to be moody, right? And uh, yes, yeah, so she is there. She has decided to go into her own cocoon to be alone, to be unconcerned about what is happening. So she has decided what is her best response. Silence is the best response. So she's going to keep quiet. Okay, right. Yes, sir. I have uh, discussed the literary devices also with you all. So where's the metaphor, right? Where is anaphora? We have done that or not? Yes. Okay. Are, are there examples of alliteration here? Right? And uh, yes, yeah. all these things we have discussed. Okay. Stop that slouching and sit up straight. Alliteration, isn't it? Yes, so all of this we have discussed, right? Yes, imagery is definitely there. Imagery is always a part of a poem where you have this very lively, vivid description. So we have imagery of this girl as a mermaid. We have a picture in our minds of this, uh, you know, like what uh, the girl as an orphan and as a bunzer. Okay, right? So the image of uh, uh, Amanda is there in the different forms in which she decides to respond to the situation. Does Amanda speak anything in this poem? Does she say anything? No. She is silent and she's there listening to her mother. Is she actually listening or has she just born into her own world? So she just keeps quiet and yeah, her mother comes and tells her to do something, but she just lost in her own world. Okay. So in a way that also annoys parents and they keep on coming you and telling you things again and again and you don't respond, it is going to make them annoyed. And as a result, Amanda keeps on getting scolded, Amanda keeps on sulking, Amanda seems to be very moody. Okay, right? Yes, so now what are we supposed to do? What is your work for the day? You're going to do the question answers of which chapter? Madam writes of us. Let us do the question answers of Amanda also. Okay? And uh, yes, take time and then make your PDFs and 